Welcome to The Deal. I'm Mary Kathleen Flynn, and I'm recording from The Deal's M&A yeah. Outlook 2009 conference. And I'm talking with Philip Goldstein from Bulldog Investors, and we're talking about the role of the activist shareholder. It's obviously changed a bunch over the last few years. Just talk about some of those changes and, and how your reputation has changed. Well, well, that's yours in a, general. I don't that's mean a great, yours in particular. Well, no, that's a great question because, like I said, back in the '80s, um, you had the, the, they called them raiders, or uh, you know, they had they were they, they it was a pejorative. Gordon geckos. Yeah, well, it was you know the, the T Boone Pickens, Carl Icahn uh, uh, types uh, who would basically go in and try to raise money to buy out companies that they, they thought were selling too cheap. I mean. I, T. Boone Pickens made a lot of money basically buying companies where he thought that the oil um, on Wall Street was cheaper than the oil in the ground. Uh, today, I, I think it's evolved into where the activists have become agents of change. They see changes that can be made without having to take control of the entire company. Sometimes it's in some sort of restructuring, it's financial engineering, selling off assets. Uh, or, or other things, and you know, maybe coming out with full strategic plans like Bill Acton did for Target. So uh, I think that plus some of the corporate scandals that have happened have made the activists, uh, let's say, uh, more, uh, uh, the, the, the public looks at them more favorably than they did back in the 80s when they were looked at as uh, destroyers of businesses. And, and sort of corporate strippers, right? Strippers right. of assets. Right. Um, so does that mean that now activist shareholders are involved in a, in a longer process in, in rebuilding a company? Yes, I think that's true. And especially in today's market where it's not as easy to get uh, a deal done, uh, I think you have to take a longer time horizon. So, you know, we got to go with the flow. Do you think there's also a sense that maybe activist shareholders are um, bringing a level of accountability, especially maybe to boards that hasn't been there before? Yes. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about the economy. How is it affecting your the deals and the companies that you're looking at? Well, as I said, uh, for operating companies, it's it's much harder to get deals done. That said, there are deals getting done. I mean, they, there's uh, the Anheuser-Busch deal. Uh, um, I think there was a recent deal for uh, AT&T. Um, I think there's still consolidation in certain industries that, that are going to go on. But certainly the credit crisis has made it um, a more challenging environment for deals. So I think, um, I think activists uh, have to have a longer time horizon and continue to work at it. But activism is not going to go away like, like just like the companies that are in trouble today are not all going to go away. They're going to be ebbs and flows. In, in some sense, are there ever more opportunities for you than before? I mean, I, mean, I would think you're, look, you're looking for places where you can add value as a shareholder. I would think there are a lot of underperforming companies. There, there are incredible opportunities. You know, the, the irony, as one of the panelists mentioned, uh, the irony is that while there's incredible opportunities, there's also uh, no capital, you know, very little capital to exploit them. So, you know, it's kind of you're kind of like the guy looking in a in the window of a of a fancy steakhouse, and you see the steak sizzling, and it's, you can almost taste it, but you can't get at it because you don't have the capital. So, if 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 we could raise the capital, you know, it, it sort of goes hand in hand. It's it's ironic, but you know that's what it is, and you got to work with what you have and. Uh, Everybody's capital constrained, including activists. So you just, you know, you just do the best you can. But I do think it's a strategy that that will add value. It just might take a little bit more time. We have a new administration. What are your expectations for the Obama administration, and how do you think it will affect deal making? Boy, I have no idea. And you know what? I don't think he does either. <laughs> I think that Obama. So far, from what I've heard, he's been so evasive and vague. And I don't say it's Obama. I think McCain did the same thing. The truth is, there's nobody, including Bernanke and, and Paulson and everybody from the top to the bottom, they really don't know what to do. And, you know, that's the truth. And I, w 
I don't know what to do. It's, we're in a situation that nobody's ever seen, and it's very difficult to know what to do. You know, um, Warren Buffett gave an interview, and he talked about how the uh, U.S. economy was like a star athlete that's on um, uh, that's in cardiac arrest, and we, we just got to get the heart going. The problem is, is that when you're if you're in cardiac arrest, and we rush you over to the ER. They kind of know what to do, you know. There's enough experience to, to know what to do. They put the paddles on and they can get the heart going. Or at least they know what works. The problem is, is nobody really knows what works. So it's kind of like they try to say, well, let's try this. Let's try giving money to the banks. Let's try giving money to the insurance companies. And that didn't work. Then they, let's, let's ban short sales. Let's do the, you know, so they keep throwing out one solution after another. But they, nobody really, if, look, if everybody knew what to do, the first bailout plan would have passed by 100%. Obviously, people had doubts about it, and rightfully so. So I, I don't envy Obama at all, because he's walking into a situation where, I mean, I hope he succeeds, but truthfully, I don't think he knows what to do, and, uh, you know, I, I, nobody does. That right, was well, scary. An honest man, to admit it. All right, <laughs> Philip Goldstein from Bulldog Investors, thank you very much. And thank, thank you for you. watching The Deal. I'm Mary Kathleen Flynn.